All right, good morning. Um, well, with all the storms that had been raging on the East Coast, and I was doing a little cleaning out, and I came across some pictures of a vacation um, that I had instigated with my family. Um, somehow I thought this was a really good idea. Uh, that I had said to my uh, folks, I said, um, you know, we should all do a family vacation. We had not all lived in the same house since I was 11 years old. And I don't know, I had watched too much Hallmark TV or something. I don't know, it just, it all just seemed like such a great idea, right? And so, and so my, my dad's like, well, what do you suggest? And I said, I think we should rent a house on Martha's Vineyard. And he said, well, that sounds like fun, you know? And so um, my mother said she would only go for two weeks. It wasn't worth the effort to go for only one week, to pack up the cars and everything. And you know, it's a big production to go to Martha's Vineyard. You have to, uh, so we had to find a house to rent for all of us, my, my parents, my siblings, their spouses, their kids, me, um, and, and pretty much anybody we'd ever known growing up. We had to have a house that was big enough for all of that, right? And, um, and like the weather we've been having recently on the East Coast, we got to Martha's Vineyard, we, got, you know, we had to make a reservation to put the car on the ferry and take the car over, and oh my God, it just involved so much pre-planning. And no sooner did we get to the house when the hurricane struck. And so did I remind you that um, my nephews were all there? And, uh, and the power was on, and the power was off, and the power was on, and the power was off. And you know, kids are used to electricity. They are. The kids are used to electricity because they play all these electronic games and stuff. And so, you know, the batteries only last for an hour. It was a really interesting time. A really interesting time. I, I had prepared mentally and spiritually for the trip a lot. I, I really had to get myself psyched up for this. Uh, because I have this deep-seated belief, I realize that my belief is that when you go back to visit family, um, you regress. They always see you as about nine years old. It doesn't matter how big you are, how old you are, what responsibilities you have in life. They pretty much see you as nine years old. So um, part, of my pre part of my preparation was I would pray and I would meditate uh, before the trip. And a friend suggested to me, she said, when I go visit my family, I pretend I'm visiting someone else's family. And, and I thought that sounded really interesting. I said, well, tell me more about that. And she says, well, like, I, I, I go like, I, I try to have this attitude like I've never met these people before. And if I were visiting a friend's family, how polite I would be and how interested I would be and all of those things, you know, I'd have no preconceived notions about them. I'd just show up, be open and be conscious. And I thought, okay, that's my mantra. That's my mantra for this family gathering. Show up, be open. Be conscious. And boy, it was an opportunity. Yes, it was an opportunity. Uh, you know, for, so for those of us who are always interested in why we are the way we are, I can tell you that this was like a several thousand dollar workshop intensive. Yes, it was. <laughs> They were the most incredible facilitators I'd ever experienced because they looked and sounded just like my family. But I was pretending I had never met them before. You know, they had all been clued in as to exactly how to push my buttons, every one of them. Now, I think that family has a particular knack for pushing buttons because they were usually there when they were installed. Yes, you know, so they know right how to get in there and push that button. So to be with, to be with family, people we know well, is a real opportunity to, to look at the growth that's taken place in ourselves, but also in them, because I had to keep reminding myself, I'm not who they remember me being. I've had decades of growing in consciousness since I left home, really, at, at 15 years old. And, um, and then I'd have to remind myself, so have they. So have they. I'm not the only one who has grown, evolved, and changed. They have also been having their own path, imagine that, and they've been growing and evolving and changing as well. Uh, now about the Judas thoughts that I was going to talk about today. Judas in the Bible, Jesus really, really loved Jesus, uh, Judas. Jesus loved him. It's why he picked him to be among the 12. But everybody, I think, knows the story that, that Judas betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He sold him out. 
Now, metaphysically, we say that Judas represents sense consciousness, the separation thinking of the world, you know, that the power is outside of us. And I think, what does this have to do with us? Well, we teach that we are all made in the image and likeness of God, you know, that we are spiritual beings on a path of evolution. We're here to grow, to learn, to celebrate, to heal, to evolve, to express life and express it more abundantly. Like Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So this is the I am, the Christ, not him personally. So we have divinity within us, we teach, and it's always there and it can never be diminished. However, because we have free will, because we have choice, we can be Judas in our own life. And I know I have been to myself, and I suspect perhaps you have also, that we can betray the truth within us. So truth is, science of mind says, that we are the perfect offspring of the divine, that we are the children of the Most High God. We are whole, perfect, and complete right now. We are love, we are abundance, we are life. We lack nothing, that's the truth. And I think on some level, we all know this is what draws us here. And yet we become Judas to the full expression of the God potential that is within us. How do we betray ourselves, our higher selves? I think we come from the past in our perceptions of ourselves. Or we hear someone else's voice in our head, some limiting idea, some limiting scenario. We see ourselves as perhaps limited or small or not much or not good enough. We see ourselves as the mistakes that we have made in the past. See, we are living life from the outside in rather than from the inside out, which is what we want to do as students of science of mind. We tend to be focused on the level of appearance rather than on the rich inner life of spirit within us. And when we are focused solely on appearances, I would say that those are Judas thoughts. We are betraying the truth about ourselves. We say and believe horrible things about ourselves. I don't know anybody who hasn't at some time done that. We think that we're not much. We tell ourselves that we're not capable or this is going to be hard or impossible for us. What if I can't do it? What if I fail? Well, you know, if you're on the path of expanding consciousness, we're going to make some mistakes along the way. You know, we're going to betray the best that is within us. Now, that's not a bad thing if you notice it and self-correct, and that's what we're here to do today, to notice where we betray ourselves and to get back on the path. You know, we might listen to the worldview rather than the voice of truth within us. We might join in with other people in a perception of how limited we are. We might really get down on ourselves for something. But in order to turn the mistake into good, to get something out of that experience, other than evidence for why we're wrong, bad, and awful, right, and can never do anything right, you know, we have to forgive ourselves and other people. Everyone, everyone, everyone. We must know that we have learned from our experience, and in the future we will choose differently, because if we've learned anything, the experience isn't wasted. It's when we don't learn anything from an experience that we have to repeat it again and again and again. So a woman was telling me about uh, the dissolving of her romantic relationship. And um, her words were, um, he betrayed me. And you know, she said that in that tone of voice where you knew, okay, we have now gone into unforgivable territory here. All right? And, I, and so after she spoke a while, I said, so was he the right person for you? And she gave me a big, strong, no, absolutely not. I said, OK, so that's good. That's actually good. He wasn't the right person for you. Then keep asking for the good to be revealed and for the learning that's in this to be revealed to you, and only good will come from it. Right? Because if you're just mad, if you're just mad about it, then there's no opening for anything good to come in. All right? So do you think that? that that Judas betrayed Jesus, and then Jesus was complaining about Judas all the time? You know, the whole way to crucifixion and resurrection? Jesus is saying to himself, I never should have picked him. Why did I pick Judas? Oh my God, I can't believe I picked him. I had a feeling he wasn't going to be good. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I never should have trusted him. I knew, I knew. My mother told me not to trust him. You know? I think we have to forgive ourselves for all the times we were not able to do better. You know, that sometimes our doing has not caught up with our knowing. You know, we all know better than we do sometimes. 
And because we're connected with all people, we have to forgive all people for their mistakes, for all the times they were not able to do any better. And yes, include yourself in that, absolutely. I'm not saying we're inviting people to walk all over us again, but if it was really hurt, if, it was, if something was hurtful, if something was harmful, we have a right to say, hey, that hurts, it's not okay. But let's not kid ourselves. We are limiting our own conscious growth if we keep our heart closed here, even after what people have done. Do we actively, do we get up in the morning and actively intend to hurt people? No, of course not. Do we get up in the morning and actively intend to love people? Mm, I hope so. I hope so, because if that is the case, then we are on more of the right track. If we made a mistake, we have to just get over it. There will be errors, there will be setbacks, there will be downfalls, you know, but you don't want to continue to be Judas betraying yourself. We have gotten beyond the point in our own growth where we can be happy about somebody else's misfortune. You know, it says in the Bible, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So, you know, I don't concern myself with the outcome of anybody else's karma. It's frankly none of my business. It's between them and God, I feel. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That means it's all going to work out in the end, right? I don't have to be concerned about it. I don't, I don't want my heart to be full of any kind of energy of punishment because if that's there in me, that's what I'm telling the universe I want. I want it to be filled with a realization of healing. Okay, wow, I made a mistake. I want to be healed of that. Oh, they made a mistake. Okay, I want for them to have insight and realization and healing as well. You know, are we going to change and grow and become better from those experiences or are we going to whine and stay small and repeat the past? See, I think it takes a big consciousness to say, I made a mistake. Yeah, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I promise I will try to do better. You know, we think it's so monumental to make a mistake. It's an error, that's all it is. In the course of a lifetime, we will make bazillions of them. And hopefully, 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 because we're attempting to be conscious beings, we will notice them quicker, and we will get the learning from them, and we will be able to move on. If I live in fear of making a mistake, I'm washed up before I start. You know, I could take this job, but what if it doesn't work out? I could go out on this date, but what if they're not the right person? You know, I could order the scampi, but what if I make a mistake and it's not the right dish? You know, it, it, might, it also might all be wonderful, right? And if it is a mistake, well, you know, something better for the future. We've learned something. See, because on the path of consciousness, we're always endeavoring to go through life more awake and more aware. We get experience from a life fully lived. You know, bad judgment leads to good judgment. I say that all the time, if we're conscious, if we're paying attention. So we are Judas to the spirit of God within us when we are in error and we continue to believe that the error defines us, you know, that we are in fact the error. We experience errors, we make errors, but let's be clear, we are never ever the error. When people say, I will never get beyond this, some experience, some difficulty they've had, they are really limiting the power of God within them to heal, to move them forward in any kind of constructive way. If we're going to live a big life, and I hope we all are, there will be many times we betray the spirit of God within us. But to become better at life, we have to get in the game. You know, it's not lived from the sidelines. You know, I look at it like this. You can read all kinds of books about swimming. You can watch DVDs about how to improve your stroke and the breathing and all these kinds of things. You can see interviews with expert swimmers online. But if you never get in the water because you're afraid of getting wet or afraid of getting water up your nose, that is not swimming. All right? You know, the failure is to be afraid to try, to be afraid to participate. Or, you know, or, or to say, you know, gee, I goofed up. I can never do that again. The point is to keep getting back up. You know, I, um, I will tell you, I have, I have one piece of Hollywood memorabilia that is very dear to me, um, and it's uh, Elizabeth Taylor's signature three times on a page. And I've had it framed, and it's matted in purple, so it looks like her, you know. And it's my, it's my treasured Hollywood memorabilia possession. And... Um, and how I have that, or I have, why I kept that, is, um, is that I just, I just love Elizabeth Taylor. How could you not love Elizabeth Taylor? You know, the diamonds, the husbands, the career, the whole thing. She, everything, you know, it's fantastic. Though people talk about her like, talked about her like she was not serious about love. And I always felt differently because I believe it's because she is so serious about love that she kept going for it. 
you know? And people would say, oh, but she's been divorced many times, and I don't see that as failure. I really don't. I see someone who is learning and willing to master relationship. She is in the game, right? And that's one of the things I loved about her. So when I look at those frame signatures at home, I think, yep, just keep suiting up and showing up and be in the game. That's it. That's absolutely it. See, God in us has an infinite capacity to grow and learn and create and express. And none of us arrived here on earth or at earth school, as I like to think of it, as a finished project. We're all works in progress. Right? Something I liked about um, the Renaissance is the idea of the Renaissance man and the Renaissance women, that they did many things. They wrote poetry, they painted, they studied anatomy, they studied languages, they studied music and history and dancing and art and all kinds of things. You know, today we say, I do this, I do one thing, I do history, I can't do anything else. Why? Well, that seems so limiting to me, right? That we're afraid we might make a mistake or we won't be good or we won't be perfect at something out of the gate. And I think that's a betrayal to, uh, of the desire to express because desire is of God. God is seeking expression through all of us. So I trust that life is for me, for all of us. Life is for all of us. So while on this trip, this family adventure, I went grocery shopping with my brother. And uh, now, personally, I love to grocery shop. I really do. My dad was in the grocery business, so we all worked in grocery stores at different times growing up. Um, sometimes, if I'm feeling a little chaotic in life, I'll just go into a grocery store and start facing cans, you know, I just, <laughs> it, I feel like it brings order to my world, you know, and um, uh, because we couldn't walk in a grocery store with my dad and not do that, you know, it was always essential, you know, or, or if we saw something on the floor, you know, he'd say, pick that up, and I'd say, why, I didn't put it there, and he said, because somebody's going to have to pay for that, and you don't want the store to take it as a loss, so just pick it up. And so we were always picking, it's like, oh my God, I just wanted gum, and I've got to go in and straighten aisle six, you know, it was like that, you know. So, um, so my brother and I, we go into the grocery store, and, and it's, uh, mind you, we are on an island, and it is raining heavily. Um, and, uh, and I made that mistake I have often made, where I go grocery shopping when I'm really hungry, you know? Um, and so by the time we actually got into the store, we were drenched. We were soaking wet. And, and, and okay, there was a hurricane that's, that's approaching, you know? And so uh, we started with quite a long list. Um, and everything, everything actually kind of looked good. And we didn't know, you know, is the power going to go out? Will we be without power? Will we be able to cook? Da, 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 da. Well, we always have the grill, da, 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 on and on and on. Um, uh, and then the power went out in the grocery store. Uh, and, and I have a, you know, I'm that person with the ridiculous shopping cart, I have this huge shopping cart. And so I think to myself, all right, God is in this situation. God is in this situation. And I have the intuition, go to the flashlight aisle. Oh, because the store is pretty much dark. There's a little bit of emergency lighting, but remind you, it is Martha's Vineyard. It is not the best equipped place. So I go to the flash, the area where the flashlights are, and there are none left. And, oh, I was clear that I had to finish the shopping uh, because I have a house full of people, and, and we might actually be in survival mode. So I keep saying to myself, God in me is greater than this. I can do this. God in me is greater than this. I can do this. And so um, as I'm affirming and kind of talking to myself and putting things in my cart kind of in the dark, I'm talking to a woman, and she, she mentions to me that she got one of the last two flashlights. And I say, wow, good for you. Great consciousness on your part. Look, blah, 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 blah. And so we visit a little bit. And then she says to me, she was done. Would I like her flashlight? I said, yes, absolutely. God in me is greater than this. I can do this. Good will come from this. So I continue my shopping, you know, and then um, it occurred to me, I, I don't know if this ever happens to you in the grocery store, but I realize how hungry I am, and I cannot possibly wait to get home. I can't. I'm just, I'm going to die of hunger in the grocery store if I don't open something. And so... I look at my cart and I have all the appropriate things there, Cheetos, Pringles, Oreos. I open them all. I open them all, right? And so as I'm going through the store, 
I'm offering people Oreos and Cheetos and Pringles, and, I'm, and I find it turns into like a little party. I'm having a really good time in the market. And my brother is wandering around, stressing, looking for things, and now I've got a flashlight under my arm, and I'm offering people Pringles and Oreos and Cheetos, and, and we're visiting, and isn't it exciting? The storm's coming. Do you have propane at home? And, what, and he, says, he says, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, making the best of it. And he looked at me and he said, you are so weird. <laughs> like only a brother can say. And he wanders off. And I was like, what? What? You're Pringles? You know? I mean, what? You know? I didn't think going to the market in a hurricane was silly. It seemed actually kind of smart to me. And if I was going to start to tell myself I should, you know, that that was a mistake, then nothing good could come from it. So what I know about the errors we make is if we're committed to our path of spiritual growth, is that what we wind up doing is that we bring those little dark places in consciousness, those little spots of not healing, we start to bring those to the light for healing and release. Now, other people are also doing this. You know, we don't know what other people are learning or healing. We don't know what they're working on or what they're working through. You know, but whatever we're going through, whatever we've been through, it can all contribute to making us a better person. Our thinking, our habits, our conditioned ways of being can, yeah, they can betray us. You know, and God in us is always greater than anything that we face in the outer world. So we choose again, and we choose again, and we choose again, right? And so our action in the world, I think, has to support the spiritual realization we have, the highest truth we know. That's what we have to be like in the world. What's the highest truth I know? And our feet have to move in the direction of our prayers. So if you notice that you have Jesus, uh, Judas thoughts, you want to kind of throw those overboard. I realize we all have the an incredible capacity to be our own worst enemy. But what I'm asking us to do this week is to be your own God cheerleader for yourself in your life. Let's pray. Thank you. So we turn our attention inward for a moment and remember that right here where we are, God is. That there is infinite loving spirit. There is divine intelligence. There's wisdom and wholeness and abundance. All of the qualities and attributes of God exist right where we are. They are the truth about us. And so as we join together in consciousness, affirming our oneness with God and also that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, I speak the word for each and every one of us that there is healing here today, that there is raising up for all of us, that if we have believed something about ourselves that limits us in some way, if we have thought some error of the past is cramping our style in this present moment, if we have thought there is something in our life that we will never get over, we surrender all of that at the altar of consciousness today and remind ourselves that with God all things are possible and that the infinite intelligent spirit of the universe can use everything in our life for a greater good. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of our loved ones, and we remind ourselves that God is right where they are. God as love, as all needs met, as perfect healing. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So all of those things that pull at our attention, we say God is there, spirit is present, love is real in all of it. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together. So with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so, I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.